You've got questions about money. Well, we have the man to answer those questions. Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham. Welcome back to another episode of Ask the Hammer, Jeffrey. Good to be with you, Bob. Good to be with you, too. I've got some easy ones today. I'll start with the easiest of them. Yeah, right. What are the pros and cons of having a safe deposit box? Well, I mean, the safe deposit box gives you a place where you can store things that you really care about with a good degree of confidence that they will be well protected, uh, protected from things like floods, protected from things like fires, and most obviously protected from things like theft. We all like to think we live in secure places, but the reality is our homes with plenty of windows uh, and, and other means of entry are, are not the most secure places in the world if someone really wants to get in there. So for things like valuable items, such as very valuable jewelry or things that are valuable beyond just the financial means, could be birth certificates, could be passports, uh, could even be really valuable uh, pictures on a, on a thumb drive even today, right? Uh, you may want to have those stored in a facility where you can have a greater degree of confidence that they will be remain, remain protected. So the cons? Well, cons, well, for two things. First off, it's not free, right? Or at least usually it's not free. Maybe if you have a lot of money at a particular institution, uh, they might offer it. But the other thing is uh, you have to have access to the facility to actually get those things out, which means uh, typically having a physical key that you need, need to keep track of. If something happens to you, someone else may need to have that physical key, or it may be difficult to ultimately go down the line. You need to go to court and have uh, you know the courts authorize entry into the safety deposit box, et cetera. So it can be a little bit more complicated. The more protected it is from others, the more protected it usually is from even yourself. <laughs> So, so I've heard in cases where someone dies, getting access to the box they own could be problematic. It can be difficult uh, or take a while. Typically, it might involve uh, a court reviewing the will and seeing who the executor is and authorizing. Obviously, if you're the bank or the other institution with that account, the last thing you want to do is give the wrong person access. So they tend to be a little bit, uh, a little bit more on the safe side than they do anything else. Yeah. And so if you are that person who uh, has uh, is, is going to die, you don't want to put in instructions around where you want to be buried or uh, or your last will and testament, perhaps in the safe deposit box, et cetera. You know, I always say if you're going to do that, it's good to it's fine to put copies of that there, but you certainly want to have copies elsewhere. For me, when it comes to those type of documents. I like to actually give the person who is the fiduciary a copy so that they have it. So meaning if I have a trust, I want to give the copy of the trust to the trustee. If I know someone is going to be my executor, I want them to have a copy of my will as well, maybe in their safety deposit box, so that when something happens to me, they have a safe place to go to get it. Yeah. Well, here's what I want. I want people to send their original questions and maybe even their copies to us if they have questions about money. That's right. Deposit your questions in our inbox and we will circle back with you at our earliest convenience with the answer to your question. You can do that by emailing us at askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, that's askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. And Bob and I look forward to seeing your questions in our inbox real soon.